If I were to hand you a Bible and ask you to find Jesus somewhere within its pages, where would you look first? Probably the New Testament, right? Especially in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, where we have all the information and the stories about Jesus' life. But what if I told you that you could actually find Jesus in every book of the Old Testament? And that that fact was one of the greatest evidences of the inspiration of the Scriptures. Here's why that's so important. It's because the Bible was written by about 40 different men. And it was written over a period of 1,600 years. And every single one of those men came from a different time period in history, a different political environment, a different geographical area. And yet, as they wrote, there's one unified message throughout the entire Bible, and that is the redemption of man through Jesus Christ, purposed before the world began by design of the Father. In Genesis, Jesus is the offspring of woman who will crush the head of the serpent. In Exodus, he's the Lamb of God without blemish. In Leviticus, the high priest. In Numbers, he's the one who's lifted up in the wilderness of sin. Deuteronomy, he's the prophet like Moses. In the book of Joshua, he's the one who's going to lead the people into the land of rest. In Judges, he's God's appointed deliverer. Ruth, he's the kinsman redeemer. In 1 Samuel, he is God rejected as the king. In 2 Samuel, he's the heir of David's throne. In 1 Kings, he's the one who's greater than Solomon. In 2 Kings, he's the one like Elisha, who isn't accepted in his own country. In 1 Chronicles, he's the son of David. In 2 Chronicles, he's the only perfect king. In Ezra, he's the divine temple rebuilder. Nehemiah, the guide of the remnant of God's people. In Esther, he's the providential protector. Job, the advocate to plead our case to God and our Redeemer. In the book of Psalms, he's the one who's crucified but is not left in Hades. Proverbs, he's the wisdom of God and the founder of the earth. In Ecclesiastes, he's the one who will bring everything into judgment. Song of Solomon, he's the best example we have of true love. In Isaiah, he's the virgin-born suffering servant. In Jeremiah, he's the branch. Lamentations, he's the man of sorrows who's weeping over the city of Jerusalem. Ezekiel, he's God's servant and God's prince. In Daniel, he's the king over the kingdom that shall never be destroyed. In Hosea, he is the forgiving and redeeming husband to the unfaithful wife. In the book of Joel, he's the savior of those who call on God. Amos, the rescuer of Judah. Obadiah, the deliverer of Mount Zion. In Jonah, he's the three days that Jonah spends in the fish. In Micah, He's the blessing of Bethlehem. In Nahum, the stronghold in the day of wrath. Habakkuk, the justifier of those who live by faith. In Zephaniah, he is the channel through whom all the nations of the world can worship. In Haggai, he's the shaker of heaven and earth, whose kingdom can never be shaken. In Zechariah, he's the one who was betrayed for 30 pieces of silver. And in Malachi, the one whose forerunner, is Elijah. Now I know that those slides went by way too fast for you to pick up all the information on each slide. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take the verse that correlates to the point on each slide and for each book and put it down in the description below. That way you can go through either with yourself or with a group or a Bible study group and uh, pause the video on each slide and then go down and look up the verse. That way you can check me out and you can mark it in your Bible and find it out for yourself. And so I'll do that. I appreciate you watching this video. If you like the video, subscribe. We do new Bible Christian content five days a week. And give us a like if you appreciate it. And if you have any comments, leave them down below and I'll respond to you. I promise. Thanks.